what if Eddie would have been elected uh, two years ago? What would the city look like today? You know, I, I often wonder. Uh, the leadership style would definitely be different. I absolutely agree, Chuck. If he would have been elected two years ago, having known him for over six years, mm -hmm. I agree with you. Well, you talk about people who appease others or, or lead from the front, and, and uh, I, I envision Eddie, I see Eddie, uh, obviously, as somebody who, who commands leadership when he walks in the room. I know he's not afraid to say no to a project if it's going to have a negative impact on our community. And I also know he's not afraid to raise the flag for something that would benefit our community. You know, and I look at, you know, what do I want? I want, I want somebody who is going to support our police, uh, not cut any budgets. but support our law enforcement every time I've uh, ran into them. And I think, you know, when you ask people about homelessness, for example, I think nobody has the fix. But I think what you need in leadership is somebody that has a vision or an idea who is willing to share that and connect that thought and those visions with the right people in the right room. Because not just one person is going to have all the answers. I'm a decision maker, but sometimes you get the best opinions from people around you. So me, I always have an open mind. You listen to everybody. And sometimes where you least expect it, somebody will come up with the best idea of all. I went to school here at Glen Duncan. We'll go over to the playground. A lot of good memories here. And right down over there where they have the playground toys now is where I got my first kiss in the fourth grade. And then I also used to, at the end, that was one of my classrooms down there on the end, and we had a lot of great teachers. Mrs. Hopkins, she was really kind to me, and I'll never forget those days. And then we also had Mr. Rusty Crook, who was my PE teacher. He had a classroom down there also, and Mr. Mr. Crook used to be an Olympic ski champion. A lot of people know Mr. Crook. Well, he was a very kind person too. And then I also played the flugelhorn. I was in the band here at Glen Duncan. They were one of the few grade schools that had a band and stuff like that. And Mr. Beecham was my band teacher. Here it is, Glen Duncan, I'm so old where I remember when the principals could spank you. His name was Mr. Covington. I never got in trouble, but the rumor was, so I just tried to behave myself, mind my P's and Q's, so I never ended up facing the paddle. He grew up in the neighborhood that I grew up in. What, a white boy? He was probably the only white boy in a black dominant neighborhood. Then it became all Mexican. But that says a lot about a person, because he was a kid in a tough environment. And he made it through that. That explains how Eddie is so different. And, who, and whoever's out there listening to me, as an American, as someone who has come from nothing into something, I'm telling you, my black brothers, my people of color brothers, familia, la raza, check this out. Eddie Lorton is the man. Why? Because I know both sides. As a result of Eddie's not just experience and the fact that he's a well-lived man, his heart, is bigger than his pockets. And I've never been able to say that about anybody. We get a lot of music and noise and blah, 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 but nothing ever happens. And I can sit here and discuss and give you explanations and at the same time proof, because I've been let down so many times, but that's not why I'm here for. I've been an activist for 25 years. That should mean something. And regardless of my situation, as far as being hurt, being angry, frustrated, I've never given up. I wouldn't be here wasting my time. I don't need anybody in my corner. I'm already almost 50 years old. I have fought for the, for the small people. I have endorsed those that I know are real, that are the underdog. Sometimes you just have to get involved. And if you don't get involved, you can't make change. So get involved, try to do something. I hope more of the public comes to meetings. Like now they got the public shut out of these meetings or doing the Zoom thing. They can social distance in there, but sometimes they don't want to be accountable to the public. I say let's move our meetings to nighttime on the two meetings a month so the public can be more involved. I want to hear what the public wants. We became uh, rather close uh, when we were working together on the, the Business Improvement District, or rather the opposition to the Business Improvement District as it 
related to the assessment of the downtown churches. And this building is where it used to be the post office when we were kids and I'm glad to see they turned it into businesses and they repurposed the building so we could keep part of Reno history. And Eddie is a very passionate individual. He truly cares about Reno and the people who reside here. I'm not going to try to charge you taxes without going to vote. This city council implemented a BID, a business improvement district. So without much public input, they did to a certain extent, but they ended up running it through and there are certain people that get the main benefit of this business improvement district money and they're all on the board so they pad the board with their yes people and now what they did they opened the circle up more so more people had to pay into this improvement district and now we have ambassadors downtown our homeless problems gotten worse they haven't done anything hardly except for they do guard the casinos but people are paying into this thing so right now once again out of my pocket i have a pending lawsuit okay and that's why some of the casino owners don't like me right now because I'm fighting for the people once again out of my own pocket it would have cost me on this building a nominal amount of money to pay my assessment but then some people that are living in the high rises pay a giant amount on this assessment so I spent 50 times more money fighting this lawsuit than just paying it out of my own pocket. And you know why? Because it helped citizens out and it was wrong. I don't want to pay for the casino security and it's through this ambassador's program when they should be paying for their own. So that's why I fight these fights. One thing about Eddie is that he is, um, he is totally in love with Nevada and he loves all about Nevada. And he especially likes Reno more than any, anything else, it's when I talk to him, he, he always, always talks about the politics of Reno and how he thinks he can do better. As far as the city council, had he been elected mayor two years ago, um, I think we would see a different complexion on the city. Um, I think there's been some real misguided policies that have occurred. Uh, uh, under the current leadership, and I believe strongly that needs to change. Eddie's given me half rent since the starting of the coronavirus, and um, completely necessary uh, for us at the time to even stay where we're at. So um, money doesn't control him. Um, friendship and uh, loyalty does. He is not afraid to give his opinion. He's not afraid to expose the facts. Um, and uh, tell it like it is. I think he will uh, change uh, the complexion somewhat of the city council uh, in that I think it'll be much more open and visible to the public rather than uh, deals behind uh, closed doors uh, uh, and the like. I agree. Well, I just don't think that he'll let any, any back stuff go on. And if he knew about it, he'd tell everybody. That's what I think. I don't think he would hide anything from the people. The major problem with America right now is the hiding of facts. And I believe that he would help the facts come out the way they should be. They try illegal things all the time, but it takes people like me that are consistent and persistent and can go after them with meaning. I've been right every time. Whenever we take them to court, we win. They gave away $3.6 million of your sewer fund money over to the Park Lane Mall project. It was an open meeting law violation. And at the time, the attorney general sided with me. Through the middle of the night, they ended up not informing the public that their sewer fund money was going to go for this. They didn't have it on the agenda right to where Mr. Smith could understand it. And then they got $3.6 million of your sewer fund money to subsidize a billionaire and now your sewer rates go up. So there's a lot of complex things that go on that I fought before and won. I know the ins and outs. I know who does what to who. I know what they do and your best interest is what I have in mind. I'm not shy about it. This is where I went to middle school. Clayton Middle School, and this was a great school. There was a lot of teamwork, camaraderie, and as the slogan says, it takes a pack to raise a cub. So I learned a lot of teamwork here also. Played a lot of baseball in Little League here. 
also ran track. It was a great time in my life where we had a lot of friends. It's up here in Reno, and I love this place. What happens to power, it becomes corrupt, and, and I think the Democrats are corrupt. I think that the media is picking on Eddie Lorton is because he's a Republican, A, and B, he's going against the, uh, the popular Democrats of the city. So uh, someone that came in with a little Sharpie, they drew a Hitler mustache on um, Eddie Lorton's uh, sign on Socrates Drive. I pulled over with my van and all my equipment. I pulled my brake cleaner out, which would basically erase that. And I erased it. And calling anyone a Nazi just means that you might be one. I think the Democrats of of D.C., as well as the Democrats of Nevada, in particular the Democrats of Nevada, are a little anti-Semite. Eddie Lorton um, is a great guy, and he's a personal friend of mine. You know, it hurts your feelings when you're in there fighting your best for the people and to try to bring fairness for everybody, because for me, the little guy's money means as much as the big guy's money. So they'll say things that aren't true. I've been called from a racist to I'm not a very nice person. They can lie all they want. They can try to team up and do what they want. I had somebody one time, they put a sign out, and one of the council members called him and said, that sign ain't doing you no good. And he said, well, I'll let his opponent put one up too. And they said, no, it's not doing you no good. That's obstruction of an election. And I could have filed charges. It's a federal offense. You know, I didn't because a friend of mine that had my sign up was honest. I wasn't gonna step on a friend to try to, to upstage myself to win an election. I would never do that. This is where I went to high school, Reed High. We had a great principal, Mr. Williamson. We also had a renowned history teacher, which was Mr. Horlacher. We had a lot of time in, at Reed High here. But I'm back in the day, I graduated in 80, when this track used to be dirt. And now I'm glad to see it today. It's a synthetic track. And they also, the year after I graduated, got this, and they also got stadium lights. Back when I played, they didn't have any lights, so we'd have to play day games in the 90 degree heat. And the only time we got the lights is when we went to visiting schools, and then it was a nice change. And another thing I learned from sports, I started Pop Warner, Little League, track, basketball, we did all these things, and here I, would, I ran track a lot and played football. But I learned discipline, integrity, teamwork, it teaches you a lot of things in sports. So I spent a lot of good time here at this school. He's a businessman like we are, and he was just very sweet and kind. And he came across like a teddy bear instead of a rough and gruff guy that I thought in the beginning when I met him. <laughs> they weren't listening to us. We were trying to explain that we need to move in as soon as possible. And we did everything according to plan, according to the zoning. And we were just, you know, it was one thing after another. They were just not approving our certificate of occupancy. As we were waiting for the certificate of occupancy, uh, it was costing us $1,000 a day. Um, uh, for not being able to move to our next door building and um, Eddie came over and he was able to fix the problem and within 10 days we got our certificate of occupancy we were waiting for around three months and uh, if it wasn't for Eddie it would have cost us an ad additional $15,000 to fix an issue that was not a problem at all in the first place. To me that's what it's all about you know when you when you're a human being and if you're able to help another human being you need to do that that's just our obligation and our duty in this world and that's what Eddie did for us and I was very very appreciative to this day we are very appreciative of everything he's done for us our business would not be up and running today without his help but you know at the end of the day when people are just putting flat out lies out there against you and false narratives and and people not taking the time. It's hard to get people. That's why I'm glad to do this. You can get to know me a little bit better. You can get to know about my heart. I have a huge heart and I'm there to help people, but I'm not going to get walked on either. So I can be strong, but I can also be kind. But let's review. I would have saved seven million on the police station. 
Okay, another two million on the EDP payroll system, and another abuse a year tax dollar I don't like either. And subsidizing the ballpark once a year, and we're still giving the ballpark a million bucks a year. So there's ten million right there. And this year they're not even going to play ball. And not only that, when everybody else is scrimping and saving to try to get through COVID, they still kept the budget exactly the same before COVID. I would say a pay decrease. Do you realize they make eighty to a hundred thousand or a hundred and ten thousand a year for two meetings a month and a few board meetings and hearings and stuff like that and they get twenty seven thousand dollars a year in benefits too if you're asking citizens to take cuts i think that it comes from example this is where they used to have the mapes where the whale is today city plaza and I used to ride in the Reno Rodeo Parade. We'd go up and down Virginia Street, and then the judges would sit where the Mapes once stood, right in the front podium there, and they would judge us on the Reno Rodeo Parade. It brings back great memories. I was at the University of Colorado for my undergraduate work, and I was at Stanford University where I ultimately received a PhD in applied physics. When I first ran for county commissioner, I became aware, not at first, but as time went on, that it took about $100,000 to run for county commissioner and have any kind of unnecessary advertising because the county is too big to walk. And uh, even my district, District 1, is a bit too big to walk. So you need radio, you need television. I adopted a policy, no huge contributions. The problem with taking a big contribution is you may, even though you don't realize it, be unduly influenced by that contributor. The other is you're perceived by the public as being unduly influenced by that contributor. It is the duty of an elected official never to give that appearance because it undermines the public's faith in, in local government. And we don't want to do that. We want people who are good to be lined up to participate in local government, either as an elected official or as a, on a committee that advises the legislative, the elected body. Uh, we want volunteers to pitch in and help affect and draft public policy. Now I hear that recently, and it was covered by the newspaper, that candidates in this current city council election, at least three of them have received single contributions in excess of $20,000. And one of them, Eddie Lorden's opponent, received, I believe in the neighborhood of $38,000. It was a very large number, more than anybody else. In my last term as county commissioner, somewhere in the early 80s, the term limits were starting to run out. So a number of city council members couldn't run again. And so what happened was, a few of them, I think there were three, they decided that on the theory that the mayor was not an ordinary city council member, that they could run for mayor and just get another 12 years because the term limit is 12 years. Eddie was outraged by that. And that's why when he became a hero to me and to the public, because he had standing unlike anyone else. Standing means you have a stake in the result of the court decision. And he was running for mayor. So here were three other people going to run for mayor too, who really were ineligible. So Eddie did the public and the voter a favor by taking his own money, hiring a top lawyer, and going to the Supreme Court with this issue, where he won. And that preserved term limits for the citizens of Reno, and as far as I know, all local government in Nevada, because there's never been a challenge since. Do you know our city is over $1 billion in debt? That's over $4,000 for each man, woman, and child in our city. And then the city of Reno, tried to do a list of the properties they owned. Do you realize I found 150 more pieces than the city even knew they owned? That's the incompetence. So these were the expensive ones, the industrial and commercial pieces of property, and they could be sold off. What they do instead of selling it at public auction, because if you owned a piece of property, you certainly wouldn't sell it at a discounted rate. Okay, that's my tax dollar property right there, yours and mine. So why aren't they selling it for full appraised value? Instead, they run it 
to a thing called the redevelopment agency. They don't have to sell it at public auction. They can make their friend a deal for a dollar on an alleyway or an easement or a piece of land. I could make sure that they get sold and we would put 10 at a time on the market so that the market doesn't get glutted. I'm not talking about parks or certain open space. I'm talking about buildable land. Like why did we spend $7 million on the Gazette Journal building when we own real estate we could have used for free to repurpose, save the seven million, and then that would have stayed on the tax rolls. And then we could have had a different piece that was free and use that seven million for a state-of-the-art police station from the ground up. And I wish him well because he does things for the right reason. And here we are, an independent who was Democrat for the longest time and still thinks like one, endorsing and supporting a white male with money who's a Republican. But the difference between Eddie, he's self-made. He literally has had, had to strap his boots and go get it, just like you, just like me. This used to be the FIB building, the first interstate bank, and when I was a kid, they used to have a bear in the case glass, and my mom used to take me in there and it scared me. But now today it's Reno City Hall. So it brings back memories from when I was a boy to now today. Eddie and I can relate and we're part of the same class in this way. He wants for me what he wants for himself. Does that make sense? I mean, how better can I explain that? He wants for me what he wants for himself. A lot of people are selfish and they only care about what they want and they will attract you and grab you so that you can support them to cherry pickers, just so that when they get what they want, you're no good to them no more. They break your heart, they don't follow through. When someone wants what you want, and you know they've got what it takes because of who they are, as a person, their character, their morals, their values, that's where we win. And that's where we win.